Hi everyone, Sunny from Spinspire back again for another tutorial. This one is going to be about CRUD operations in HTML and JavaScript, specifically through the use of a server that will store text that the user passes in. But first, what is CRUD? Well, it's an acronym standing for four of the most essential functions any programmer should know. Create, read, update, and delete. Today, I'm going to go over a brief program that will make a system where a user can create a to-do list and go over writing to and reading from a server. We'll do the other functions, editing and deleting, in a separate video. If you're looking for a finished version of this whole program, I'll have one in the description below, though keep in mind that this version will be more complex than the one I make here. But without further ado, let's get into VS Code and make this thing. So of course we start with our usual bread and butter, exclamation point plus tab. I'm going to change our title to be aw crud, because I think it's a little funny, and I'm going to do the same for a little header at the top of our page. Now, in our actual main body and for our main elements, I want to create first a form, which will write to the server using a method called post. Then I want to allow for text input. I write an input tag, give it a name so that we can refer to it in our JavaScript later, and then give it the type text so that it accepts only text input, and then some placeholder text, which will appear in the box before the user starts typing in it. So I can write something like, what would you like to write for your to-do? We also want to have a submit button as part of the form. So we're gonna make a button with ID and type submit. I'm gonna have it say save on it so that we know what it does. Now, today's program is going to be kind of lengthy and a little bit complicated, so I want to do it as its own JavaScript file and then just have the HTML code reference it. So I have this JavaScript file and then back in our HTML file I write a script tag and then inside the first tag I say src equals crud.js and it knows what file to get because they're in the same folder. Now here, as we move to the JavaScript, I think it's important to get to discussing what the actual server we're using today is. If you look up crudcrud.com on Google, you'll actually find a site that gives you a URL you can make requests to. I'm going to go ahead and make that URL that it gives me a constant. Now we want to make our create function. So first, because we have a form, I want the JavaScript to be able to grab that element. I can use the document query selector method and tell it to grab the form on the page. And then I'm going to add an event listener for when we hit submit. This basically means that the JavaScript will find the form on the page, and then whenever the submit type button is hit, it will call a function that I'm going to call save. Now let's write the save function. We're going to pass in the click event, which is part of that event handler we made earlier. The event we pass in is the actual clicking of the button, and the default action for clicking a submit button on a form is actually one that we want to stop. What it does is that it sends the data to a place other than our server and it reloads the page, neither of which we want to happen. So our first line is going to be preventing the default part of this event and instead writing our own. Next, I'm going to make a constant named form that's the target of the event because clicking the submit button of the form is an event of the form. Now, to grab the actual text field so that I can get the text inside later, I'm going to say this constant title is equal to the element on the form with the name title, which as you'll recall we gave to our text field. It's very, very important to remember, this constant title is not referring to the text inside the field that the user has written, but instead to the actual text field itself. Now, all that's left is to make a request to our server. Remember, we're doing an async function, so our fetch request must have an await in it. As explained by the crud crud site, we can make our endpoint wherever we want, but we do need an endpoint, so we have to add it to our URL. Because our work today is making a to-do list, I'm going to make this endpoint the API site URL plus slash to-dos. Now, we're going to write that our method is to post, so that the server knows what we want to do is add a new entry into it. We want to add these headers and explain that our content type is a JSON file. These headers help the server know more about what we want and how it should respond. Next, we write what the body is, that is, what the actual core of our JSON object is, in this case, things we want to do. Now we take the text we got from the user and make it an actual JSON object. So we use the function json.stringify, pass in title, and then title.value. 
What this means is that each JSON object will have a value called title, and that will be equal to the value of the text in the text field, which is title.value. Then I'm just going to have it send an alert that says saved. I'm also going to have it find that little text input field and make the value blank. So we stored our stuff to the server, but now we want to see it. So now we have to do reading or getting as it's also called. To do this, I want to do some stuff in our HTML document first. I'm going to add in a UL or unordered list element. This is, for now, a blank spot that will become the space for our to-dos when we get them. In our JavaScript file, I'm going to make a constant that gets the element by its ID so we can actually edit it. I'm also going to create a button with the text fetch on it and then give it an on click for the function list. Now we have to make that function list. Right before I do that, however, I want to create a local array to make it a little bit easier to print and get everything. Now I define the async function list and make a fetch request to the server. It's very similar to the last one we did, but we have to change this method to get and there's not going to be a body anymore. Now, the response to this request is going to be a bunch of JSON objects, and we want to turn that into an array of actual usable objects by using the response.json function. Now I'm then going to make the to-do items array we made equal to that for ease of printing and access. Then, for the length of our array, we have to add text to our page for every single list element, so we use a for loop with that condition. This is where that unordered list we made earlier comes in. We make a constant named li, and to make that a new created element, and we write li inside for list item. We make its inner text equal to the array's title value at the i index, which is to say the inputted text from the user, and then we use the append child function to actually add it into our unordered list. One final touch here, as it is now, the function will print the list under itself over and over. In order to fix this, we want to erase it every time a print request is sent. So we use a while loop, in this case while our list has any children or elements, we remove them from the list. We need to make sure to put this above the rest of the function so we don't accidentally erase something we don't want to. So what we've written today allows us to save and print things to and from a server. For the sake of time and sheer complexity, I think it's best to leave it there today. And once again, if you're looking for a more complete version of this code with the other two functions, you can find it in the description down below. Keep in mind that also has some other things added onto it, and you will have to replace the base URL with an actual CRUD CRUD endpoint. At any rate, that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you liked it, consider leaving a like, and if you loved it, consider subscribing. That's going to be all for today. Thank you very much. I can't wait to see you in part two. Goodbye.